Tennessee Frank here bringing you another distro um, you know me I am always looking at different distributions of Linux just to see what's out there uh, kind of get a feel for how things are going in the Linux world this is one that's been around for a while um, it just recently became uh, you know an actual an actual distro before that it was beta for a long time um, but they, they've actually finally, this within the last couple years, uh, made it a, a legitimate, you know, distro. Uh, what we're looking at here is Q4 OS, and this is uh, version 3.8. Um, so it is one of the newer versions. When you log in, you'll get this uh, little little uh, welcome screen. Uh, you can run a desktop profiler which will uh, install different uh, things on your desktop for you. You can go with uh, minimal or kind of a medium or, or a full. And uh, I went with full. And uh, be advised, installing the system is not that hard. Uh, it's fairly fast. But when you do your desktop profile, uh, it took about a half an hour to get everything downloaded and installed with the full. Um, so it does pull in a lot of stuff. Uh, you can install applications here. They give you a little, uh, kind of a little menu with uh, some of the more popular. Um, you see here you got your virtual box add-ons. Um, we do have like Blue Man if you have Bluetooth. There's Wine if you want to run your Windows programs. Gparted, that's always a good one. Um, they do include Skype if you need that. NVIDIA for any of your uh, NVIDIA cards. If you're using an NVIDIA card like I have on my Dell laptop, um, that would be handy for me. Um, VLC Media Player, that's already installed since I did the, the large install. Uh, there's Firefox, which I would run. They also have Chromium and Google Chrome if you like those browsers. Um, so they give you three options right there to install browsers. There's also Synaptic Package Manager, which that's my favorite package manager. Um, but uh, you can do your proprietary codecs from here, which I've already done. Uh, got them. Turn on your desktop effects, which I've also already done. Uh, you can switch your menu over here. You see the way it is right now. This menu is like very, very... Uh, I guess from what people have said, very uh, Windows XP looking, the way it acts and stuff. Um, you can go ahead, you can switch your menu. Right now that's on the Q4OS Bourbon. Um, if you do it as a kickoff, hit apply, you can see things change. Now we have uh, very similar. You can see some of the stuff here. Um, they also have like a classic, which we can apply, which you see this is more of a, a classic, kind of, I guess, uh, more like a Windows 98 menu, where you have your different settings, you got your control panel, but uh, out, of, out of these menus, I, I kind of like that bourbon, it looks fine, and just sticking with Q4 OS, I mean, that, that looks fine to me. Um, not not that it's set up the way I like it, but I mean, it is what it is. You know, you get you got your applications, programs, accessories. You can see they got that categorized down. Entertainment, you know, uh, games. They do give you a few games out of the box, card games and stuff. Just little stuff. Internet. Um, you can see I still need to install Firefox. They do give you the Conqueror web browser, which I really am not that familiar with. I've never ran it, but that's kind of KDE's default. And uh, speaking of KDE, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, that leads us to, to what this is. This is called the Trinity Desktop Environment. 
Um, in the same way that when GNOME 2 moved to GNOME 3 and a lot of people were unhappy with the changes um, and so they forked GNOME 2 and made it the Mate desktop, uh, the people over at Q4, I guess at Q4, or some group, I'm not sure which group, um, when they moved from uh, KDE 3 to KDE 4, uh, they weren't happy with the changes. So uh, they, they went ahead and uh, forked KDE 3 and uh, they, they moved it over and, and made it into what they call the Trinity desktop. And uh, my first, my first uh, uh, KDE experiences was with, was with KDE 4. It was horrible. It was buggy. It was hard to set things up. Um, you just, you really couldn't do a whole lot with it, and uh, it, it was a mess. KDE 5 Plasma, like I'm running on my Netrunner install, is actually very good. Uh, it's easy to set up. I love KDE 5. Um, but this, yeah, this is kind of a look at, like, the older KDE 3. Here is, uh, here is some, some different, uh, wallpapers. Of course, this is called, uh, Centaurus this version. Um, they did have Scorpion. Uh, this is the Centaurus one now. And uh, we can go ahead. There's there's quite a few other wallpapers we can look at. Uh, here's a design here they have. Q4 OS. Um, they got a pyramid looking one there. So yeah, there, there is... Whoop, hit the wrong button. There we are. Um, there, there is some different wallpapers in here. You don't have to stick with this like a, a plain old uh, kind of a blue background. There's a real pretty background right there. Um, as hot as it's been here in Arizona, I wish I was there in that uh, grassy field with those clouds. That looks nice and cool. Uh, you can change pretty much anything. Change your panel size. You can move it around. There are, are different desktop profiles that you can, can do. Um, I'm sticking pretty much with the uh, default just to kind of show you what comes out of the box. But uh, I know normally for people that are Windows users, uh, we want to, whenever we bring them to Linux, steer them towards something that's kind of window like. So we'll normally do like a Linux Mint with Cinnamon or uh, maybe something like uh, with a Mate desktop or XFCE because it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly Windows like. We'll look at the control panel here while I talk, too. But honestly, I think this even looks more Windows-like. Um, in fact, it, it looks so much like Windows when I first booted it up, it kind of scared me. I was expecting a blue screen of death any second. Um, but no, it's, it's based on Debian, so it does have a good, stable foundation. Um, it should run beautifully on uh, pretty much any hardware. Uh, resources are supposed to be uh, fairly lightweight and uh, we can check that. Let me pull open a terminal here. Let's look for a terminal and let me see here if I can zoom in settings, fonts, enlarge, okay do that again, settings, fonts, enlarge, um, hopefully that's big enough. Let's do HTOP, which is installed out of the box. And uh, you can see right now, even with opening a bunch of stuff and having a lot of processes uh, going on from things I've done, it is only running 307 meg of RAM. Um, so it is fairly lightweight. Um, I think when I did a, a fresh boot and pulled HTOP, I was like in the 275s. Uh, right around there. So it is fairly light. If you have older hardware um, that doesn't have a lot of RAM, this may be a good way to go. I am seriously thinking about putting this on my little netbook. Uh, they do have a 32-bit a uh, i386 version. They also have the uh, x86-64 version, which is what I have installed here. And if memory serves, um, the uh, 386 version was just a little bit lighter on resources. Um, but we can go ahead, we can close out of here. 
But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you got your clock. We can configure it a few different ways. Um, if you watch down here, lower right, right now we got analog. We can do a, a plain clock. And we can uh, adjust the font to make it a little easier to see. Um, there's also a, a digital clock. And they do have uh, uh, what they call a, a fuzzy clock where it actually tells you what it is. Um, I kind of like just a plain clock. That's, that's my favorite uh, over the analog because this way I can just kind of do a quick glance. Of course, here's your volume control. Again, this little uh, icon looks very, very uh, Windows 98, Windows XP, uh, very, very close to that. Um, you got your menu, which is handy. I always like having a menu there. And of course, here's your date. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something, say you got an old Windows XP machine that's sitting around collecting dust, um, and you want to throw something on it, uh, because XP was end of life 2015, so really it wouldn't be safe to use. Um, let's just, let's say you wanted to, to put something on it, get that machine up and running again. Uh, take a look at Q4OS. If it's a 32-bit machine, download that 32-bit ISO. Uh, put it over on a, uh, a CD. It's small enough you can put it on a CD or DVD or even put it on a USB stick. Uh, and go ahead, boot into it, and install it. Uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But uh, yeah, here's here's where you install applications again. And uh, uh, just real quick, uh, let's let me pick something that that might be kind of quick to install. Um, I'll go ahead and highlight that, install application. You'll see it goes, it pulls it down. Right now that's what it's doing, it's going out on the interwebs. See this? Look at that box, I'm going to move it over here to the right. What does that look like? Does that not look like Windows? I mean it just scares me, it looks so much like Windows. Um, you go ahead and hit next. You hit install and uh, they have their little setup wizard which they're even calling it a wizard just like Windows uh, and it'll run out and it'll pull all your packages down and uh, get things installed and uh, it's it's fairly decent packages too I mean most of them are, are fairly new um, I've tested simple screen recorder on here it works there's no bugginess or no lag or anything um, I installed Caden Live on here so it should work since this is based on KDE, um, it's just it's the, uh, the the KDE 3 look instead of the new KDE 5 Plasma look, but it still has the the newer underlying uh, processes and stuff. Uh, I'd be willing to bet of Plasma, so it should run fairly well. Um, but yeah, it's it's pulling all our stuff right there in, and like I said, you you got Synoptic. Well, we're, we're busy pulling, so we can't do anything right now. I was going to go ahead and, and uh, show you the repositories they're pulling from. So uh, we'll let this go ahead and finish installing, and then uh, I'll, I'll keep talking about the system here. Um, but yeah, they, they have like uh, on your desktop, you got your documents, which you open. And then if you want to get to everything, like your home folder, um, just come here and hit up. And now you're in your home folder like you normally would be in, in most other distros. Um, you've got your home folder here with your documents, downloads, you know, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. So that's very much like uh, you know your home folder would be. Only you go into it through your documents. Of course, you go up again. There I am. And then you can get into here like into your root folder. See right here where you got you know your users and stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's still busy installing. It's taking it a minute. Uh, I did install uh, my drop-down terminal on a, another session that I had booted into. It worked fine. Um, you need to drag and drop it over in Auto Start. You go to Auto Start. Uh, can't find Auto Start. Let's see. Where are we going to look? Auto start is in here. Um, applications, 
programs auto start right here is auto start um, you will right click say edit menu it'll pull this open and then anything you want to start up on boot um, you will go from the menu here drag and drop it into this uh, it was a lot simpler than I tried making it out um, I was kind of wondering how do I auto start it because it wasn't auto starting when I uh, booted in but yeah you just you open your menu find what you want drag and drop it and it will automatically put it over here in your auto start so when you boot into your system your uh, drop down terminal will start up so that makes it fairly simple and yeah this this is taking its sweet time we're gonna go ahead and cancel out of that for now I'll install it a little bit later um, but yeah we can go uh, check out the desktop profiler and uh, when you first log in after you install you will be greeted with this and it'll say full feature basic or uh, keep the install uh, just you know keep the installed Q4 OS just basic stuff I went for full feature I mean why not go for everything I mean heck you know have fun but yeah there's uh, here's Synoptic which is nice and we can take a, a quick look here at uh, our repositories pull this open and you can see these are uh, all being pulled they're all being pulled from your Debian Buster repos there's back ports I'm gonna go ahead and, and add it go ahead and reload um, I like having back ports so I can get newer pieces of software if I need to but uh, yeah with Synoptic Package Manager it's it's real easy to find stuff um, you can go ahead and type in task manager let's see what we have for task managers um, there's Dolphin Trinity that's in there see what else we have see if I can find uh, the KDE task manager package list yeah a lot of different things I'll find that later I don't want to make this video too long but yeah, you you can see. I mean, you got your Synoptic, which is perfect. And if if you do a minimum install, you just come here and you can install it from from their uh, their little miniature package manager here. But yeah, this is just a real quick look around at uh, the the Trinity desktop. Uh, I would assume Trinity three and uh, KDE three. That's where they got the the Trinity from KDE three. Uh, very very Windows XP ish uh, if you're looking for something to throw on a uh, laptop or desktop and you're used to Windows give it a try Q4 OS uh, I would say so far it's gonna be another gold nugget um, I gotta run it for a while to make a hundred percent sure but at this time I'm, I'm saying Q4 OS is not a turd it's a gold nugget uh, Debian based KDE3 forked desktop environment, Trinity desktop environment. So uh, check it out and uh, appreciate you watching the video. Like I always say, either we stand up for our rights or we can sit by and watch them go away. Y'all have an awesome day. We'll talk to you later. Tennessee Frank out of here.